Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. On the July 16th, 1969, NASA launched Apollo 11, the mission that took the first humans to the moon. It is something no other country had done until then or has done since. 50 years after that small step and giant leap, the print looks back at the audacious mission. 50 years from now or more when people think of the past, they will look at the pictures from last night. But without waiting that long, here is a shortened and edited version of last night's romantic and technical history. The Apollo program was the result of the United States' aggressive campaign to establish itself as the world's greatest superpower against its rival, the Soviet Union. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union launched the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. The surprise success challenged America's claims of technological superiority, and the space race was on. In 1958, US President Dwight D. Eisenhower created the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, and began Project Mercury, which was meant to send the first human into Earth orbit. But the Soviets beat him to it when they sent Yuri Gagarin into outer space on 12th April 1961. A month later, on 25th May 1961, Eisenhower's successor, President John F. Kennedy, addressed the United States Congress thus. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. The US Space Agency committed huge amounts of resources to what became known as the Apollo program. About 400,000 people worked on the 17 Apollo missions at a cost of 25 billion dollars. The first crewed flight that was meant to test going into orbit was Apollo 1 in 1967. But a fire during a pre-flight check killed three astronauts. The subsequent Apollo missions tested various parts of the spacecraft in Earth and lunar orbit. Finally, in 1969, under Richard Nixon, the time came for Apollo 11 to take flight. So what was the plan? The prime crew consisted of Commander Neil Armstrong, Command Module Pilot Michael Collins, and Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz E. Aldrin Jr. They would land on a site in the Sea of Tranquility. The landing point was chosen keeping in mind a few parameters: the smoothness of the site and its approach, the angle of the slope, the accessibility of the site without using too much propellant and the position of the sun with respect to the lunar module what was the spacecraft like well apollo 11 had three major parts one a conical command module named columbia with a cabin for the three astronauts this was the only part of the spacecraft that eventually returned to earth two a service module that supported the command module with propulsion electric power oxygen and water and three a lunar module named eagle that would be used by the astronauts to land on the surface of the moon and return to lunar orbit the united states national bird the bald eagle was chosen as the apollo 11 mission emblem now there were many backup plans through a number of simulated practices nasa had prepared for pretty much everything that could go wrong there was a backup crew in case the astronauts were unable to go through with the mission and systems to allow them to abort the mission safely in case something went wrong and finally the white house had a speech prepared for president nixon to deliver in case the crew met with disaster fortunately there was no need for him to read out that statement and finally it was time for lift off in the early hours of july 16 1969 Armstrong, Collins and Aldrin donned their specially crafted space suits or extra vehicular mobility units and entered Columbia. At 9:32 a.m. EDT, Apollo 11 took off for the moon from the Kennedy Space Center on Merritt Island in Florida. Liftoff was watched by over 400 personnel at the consoles in the launch control center, President Nixon in the White House, the US Army's chief of staff, several state leaders, 60 ambassadors from around the world, more than 3000 members of the press, and a million people from nearby areas. Not to mention the many many millions around the world who watched the live telecast or listened to radio broadcasts. On 19th of July, Apollo 11 entered lunar orbit. The next day, Aldrin and Armstrong entered Eagle. As the descent began, The astronauts found that they would land a little bit off their target, 
so they had to quickly decide on a safe spot. Aldrin navigated while Armstrong piloted. Eventually, on the 20th of July, 1969, Armstrong radioed mission control with the words, Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. A couple of hours later, Aldrin radioed in to say, This is the LM pilot. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask every person listening in, whoever and wherever they may be, to pause for a moment and contemplate the events of the past few hours and to give thanks in his or her own way. He then took communion privately. Six and a half hours of prep later, Commander Neil Armstrong stepped off the Eagle's footpad and said those historic words. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. While on the moon, the astronauts collected soil and rock samples, took videos and stills, and experimented with different styles of walking. And with the TV camera positioned just so, as millions of viewers back on Earth watched, they planted the American flag on the moon. After spending over 21 hours on the moon's surface, the astronauts rested for a few hours before beginning to prepare for their journey back to Earth. They left a number of objects behind on the moon, an Apollo 1 mission patch in memory of the astronauts who had died in the 1967 fire, a memorial bag with a gold replica of an olive branch, and a silicon message disk carrying statements of goodwill by Presidents Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson and Nixon, and words from leaders of 73 countries. While he was still on the ladder before taking his first step on the surface, Armstrong had also uncovered a plaque with two drawings of Earth, signed by the astronauts and the President. The plaque bore an inscription as well. Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. Meanwhile, Collins had been piloting Columbia alone in lunar orbit, trying to identify the Eagle and keeping the cabin ready for Armstrong and Aldrin's return. The three managed to meet on the 21st of July and in the early hours of the 24th, Columbia came blazing back into the Earth's atmosphere and plunged into the Pacific Ocean. The astronauts were extracted and placed in quarantine for 21 days. With the success of Apollo 11, America had effectively won the space race. The moon samples from the mission continue to be used for space studies throughout the world, even today. It was a step for man and mankind, but it was impossible without women. Armstrong, Aldrin and Collins had ticker tape parades and a state dinner in their honor at which they were presented with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. But decades later, in 2016, then-President Barack Obama presented a Presidential Medal of Freedom to a woman named Margaret Hamilton for her contribution to the Apollo moon missions. Back in the 60s, when few women were in the workforce and fewer still in the fields of computers, engineering or space exploration, Hamilton, a computer scientist and engineer, wrote most of the code that enabled the astronauts to land on the moon. She is also credited as the creator of the term software engineer. 50 years later, this month, India will attempt for the second time the launch of Chandrayaan-2, our first mission to land on the moon. If it is successful, India will become the first nation to explore the moon's south pole. And interestingly, this mission is headed by two women, project director M. Vanita, and Mission Director Ritu Karidhal. This is the first time an ISRO project is headed by a woman. And in a press conference, ISRO chairman said women make up 30% of the Chandrayaan-2 team. Maybe the next moon mission will see the astronauts call it a giant leap for humankind. Another small step.